This composition looked great. I mean, I love the simplicity of it, and I love the smoothness of the background, the color of it, and especially how the light is very soft, but is still directional enough where there's great variation in the tones. And what that does is it overall gives it a three-dimensional look, or what's called a depth clue, and I kind of really like that about this image. But there was one thing I felt that was still missing. I wasn't really sure what it was. Um, I think it was just a little too simple for me. So what I did was I actually experimented with one of the lighting setups that I did in one of my previous videos. What I did was I first tilted the diffuser at an angle with respect to my surface. Then I aimed my flash toward the edge of the diffuser so that when it fires, its light spread will both shoot through the diffuser and shoot directly into the scene at the same time. And paired with this scene, I actually really liked it. Yeah, it is because of that. I'm gonna take this and kind of tilt it over halfway, covering the light, and it's gonna give this nice um, hard line across. So it'll give me soft and hard light. Put it in this direction. So all I did was I added the bowl of noodles on this lower third, the yellow cup on this upper third, and then the chopsticks on this upper third right here.
I like it. Just want to make sure it's sharp. Let me zoom in here. Yeah, it's pretty sharp. Cool. I like it. If you're wondering whether you would need a specific type of studio light to create these types of images, I initially thought that you don't. So I actually demoed this same type of shot by replacing the Godox light with one of those fluorescent light bulbs that you get on Amazon, like with one of those lighting kits. And here's how it turned out. For the most part, it looks great. Same composition, same lighting direction, but the difference worth noting is obviously the color, especially when you compare it to the original image. Notice the color of the image compared to the one used with Studio Light or the Godox SL60W. It is significantly different. Now, I didn't change the white balance. The only thing I changed were the settings to compensate for the lower brightness output of that fluorescent bulb because the light bulb isn't as bright as the Godox light. So I had to adjust my settings for that. But that's it. I didn't change anything color-wise. And yet the color on it has so much more of a green undertone uh, than the original. And even the background itself, the background is a beige colored foam board. And this light rendered it as like a yellow greenish background and it just doesn't look good. So this is why I think it's important to pay attention to the CRI rating of a continuous light. You can definitely do this with a fluorescent light bulb, but I just think that you would spend a lot more time in post-production and it might not even match up to the results you would get with a studio light with a high CRI. All right, well, that's it. And I hope this was really helpful. And, um, you know, just kind of watching me set up and how I adjust my lighting and all that. And uh, that concludes my series on continuous lighting. And I know that there is so much more to cover with continuous lighting. And I don't expect this to be this all-in-one comprehensive guide, but I just hope to kind of cover at least the core competencies to at least help you get started. So if you have any questions or if there's anything that I missed and you'd like to discuss, then go ahead and leave them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Other than that, thanks for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.